Hey everyone, Dayland with another random making encounter. It is good to see you as always. Today we're talking about how to add really quickly and easily some sound to your diorama or your book nook. <laughs> For this project, we're going to be using the DF Player Mini MP3 module. This is a really affordable, but very, very capable MP3 player. Does a lot, but we're going to really just use a simple configuration to get things going. We also need a micro SD card. You're probably going to spend more on the micro SD card than you are on the player module. Uh, so really look for things that are a good value. We don't need high capacity or high speed for this particular application. We'll need a speaker, obviously. This is a sound project. Uh, this is a little mono speaker. Three watts is really the maximum that the onboard amp can handle, so keep that in mind. A momentary push on. So this is a momentary push on switch, so it's normally open and momentary push on closed. The board itself is five volt maximum, so this is a five volt wall transformer, so switching power transformer to amp. And then when I go to wire it into either the book nook or diorama, I need some sort of a plug to actually permanently mount it so that I can plug it in. To test everything, I'm going to start with a breadboard, but eventually I need to move this to a more permanent solution. So I will generally transfer everything over to something like one of these proto boards. This is a perma proto board. This is an electro cookie proto board. So a little bit more on these as we get into the project. We'll need a couple wires, some jumper wires. That's really it, just two wires that are uh, needed and then a electrolytic and electrolytic capacitor. Now I generally like to throw these in to be a smoothing capacitor. So it allows the energy that's coming in to sort of be buffered as it first powers up. These are polarized. So be very careful when using these to make sure that the negative is plugged into the negative of the power. And that's really all we need for the project. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of extra parts that are needed. Now with the card oriented so that the SD card is down and sort of the name is facing up, I'm going to insert the player into the breadboard with the first pin sitting on the row number one, just so that we're all talking the same numbers. Just press it and wiggle that in. Now, if we look at the pins we're going to use, pin one is our voltage in. So this is where we're going to put our power in. Pin number six is the positive for the speaker. So the red wire for the speaker. Number seven is our ground. So we're going to hook that up to the ground. Number eight is the negative to the speaker. So the black wire on the speaker. Eight and seven are what are gonna be our control pins. So we're gonna wire the button in, and really seven is the um, ground. It's another ground pin. So basically what we're doing is we're dropping eight to ground. We're connecting it when we push the switch to ground, and that controls the DF player. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just push this capacitor into the power. Again, this is a smoothing capacitor. Anywhere along that strip is fine. As you'll see, these are all connected. So if we look at how a breadboard works, these on the side are all connected vertically, and those are our power and ground lines. And then you'll also see that in the middle, they're across, they're connected horizontally with a gap in between. So I'm going to hook the power up using this little dongle that I've created, this temporary little power dongle. And I'm just gonna plug the red and the black, the positive and the negative into the power strip on the side, making sure to get that polarity correct. I'm gonna unplug it here while we wire the rest of things up so we don't have power to the board. The next step, I'm connecting red 
to row one. So normally you'll speak about pins as numbers, but in this case it's row one and the negative to row number seven. Pinouts are sometimes numbered, but in this case we're not really using a methodology like that. The speaker gets plugged in, the positive or red line, red wire goes to six, and the negative goes to eight. So the ground is actually between the two, which is a little, a little weird, but some of the pinouts on this are a little kooky. Um, not sure why, but it works. On the opposite side for our momentary push button switch that we have, um, we want to, what we're, the whole point of this is really by pushing this button, we're closing the, the switch. We're cl making a circuit. So what we're doing is we're taking row eight, which is one of the trigger pins and row seven, which is a ground. And we're going to connect those. And these are a little bit pesky, those wires, but by pushing this button, what we're going to do is we're going to basically drop pin eight to ground. So we're connecting it to the ground and that's what triggers the sound. And that's it. This is really, really easy. And I just love how simple it is to add sound using this method with this board. So if we power it up, the first thing you'll see is there should be a very dim little LED glow showing that the board is getting power. Now a short press on the button should play the sound. <laughs> and another press just to show that that actually works. Now in, the, now, in this case, the short press is actually uh, controlling two things. It's controlling playback with a short press and volume with a long press. So holding the button reduces the volume. There are more ways to actually handle this and there are more controls by wiring additional pins up. But the thing to note is if you accidentally turn the volume down, the way to get the volume back is to power cycle the board with this particular setup. And then playing it again should restore the volume to its normal full volume. Now, there's a lot more that we could do with this board. It can be controlled by an Arduino. Uh, there are ways to actually add an additional button by wiring in a button to row six and dropping it as well to ground that controls playback by, you know, different button pushes. Um, one thing to note on the micro SD card, if you are a Mac user, there are some particular formatting things you need to be aware of but I'm gonna post a link to my blog post in the description that has more details on how to wire additional components in and how to deal with that sort of Mac file issue. Once I am ready to make this permanent, I'm going to take something like a PERMA proto board or some sort of a proto board, PC board, a PCB board, and I'm going to transfer that over. So if it is working on the breadboard and all is well in breadboard land, I can then move things from the breadboard over to the proto board and make it a little bit more permanent by soldering on the back. Uh, there are a lot of different types of proto boards out there. There's this one from Adafruit, which is very nice because it perfectly mirrors a breadboard, but you'll also find that there are things like um, different sizes, like Electro Cookie has this little one. You have bigger Electro Cookie boards. There are half size and full size Perma Proto boards. This is really my favorite way of making things permanent. So I hope you found this interesting and helpful. 
Um, if you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you back with another random making encounter really soon.